Happy Pascha week, everybody. Um, I hope, uh, I wish everyone uh, a blessed week and a week that is full of growth um, in faith and in our love for Christ uh, during this week. Um, and I hope that everyone had fun um, going to their own funeral this morning um, and are ready to die. Um, actually, this week is not about death. It's about passing over from death to life. We know that the word Pascha means Passover. And in this week, Christ wants to take us on a journey that goes through pain and through the cross, but with the end goal of being the resurrection. The goal here is not for us to um, feel a little sad or uh, beat ourselves up or shed a couple of tears on when things climax on Good Friday. Um, what we're actually here is to experience the resurrection of our li risen Lord. How do we know that? We know that even the prayers of the, of the funeral, the theme of the prayers of the funeral, we actually, before that, we start, the Holy, we start Holy Week with Lazarus Saturday, and Lazarus Saturday is a Saturday of resurrection. It's not, a, it's not death, it's resurrection. And the, the, the funeral prayers that we prayed this morning start with the prophecies, and the prophecies are from the book of Ezekiel, chapter seven, 37, which are about dry bones coming to life. So if there's death in my life, if there is something that is death, maybe, some, maybe I have a little bit of faith that is dead, maybe I have you know, some death in my relationships, in what, whatever. I'm here this week so I can receive resurrection for this. This, the, the prayer of the funeral this morning sets the tone for Holy Week. And it's, a, it's, it's, again, a tone of resurrection. We read in the Pauline epistle from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, but now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruit of those who have fallen asleep. For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. And again, we see in the gospel of the funeral from the book of, of John, Chapter 5, most assuredly I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. Pass over. Death to life. Slavery to freedom. Not just that. But the Gospels of the ninth, uh, sorry, the third, the sixth, the ninth, and the eleventh hour that we just read right now, you're going to find that these Gospels are all, like in all of these Gospels, Christ is explaining to his disciples that he's going to be betrayed, he's going to suffer, he's going to die on the cross, and he's going to rise again. He didn't, in his explanation, to the disciples as, as to what's going to happen, he didn't stop at the cross. He went all the way to the resurrection. So he can set the tone with his disciples and tell them, there is victory. There might be a little bit of death, but at the end there is resurrection, at the end there is victory. Christ told us in many occasions that he has come to give us life, that he has come to give us resurrection. See this in John chapter 10, verse 10, it says, I've come that they may have life, and that they may have it more abundantly. And again in John chapter 11, I am the resurrection and the life. We are coming this week to receive the risen Lord. We are coming this week to receive life, and not just life, regular life, but abundant life. Now, the theme of tonight's reading, the part of the journey for tonight, is focused on preparation. And in preparation for this journey, like usually when you're going to somewhere, 
uh, trip. You prepare. You prepare your luggage, you, you know, print your boarding pass, do whatever you need to do so that you're ready for the journey. Same thing here. Tonight the theme is preparation. And from the readings we can glean three ways of preparing ourselves for this journey. First one is, as you can see on the screen, examining my faith. We see in um, Matthew chapter 21, and this is one of the readings that we read today, it says, when he had come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, who is this? Who is this? Okay? Highlight this. Now, in two of the Gospels that we read tonight also, Jesus asks his disciples, who do you say that I am? You know, this is the part where he asks his disciples, who do people say uh, that I am? And some say, you know, John the Baptist, some say Elijah, some say one of the prophets. And he tells them, but who do you say that I am? And I think Christ is posing this question to each and every one of us this week, before we start or at the beginning of the week. He's saying, he's asking each and every one of us, who do you say that I am? Who am I to you? Am I just a teacher? Am I a whatever? Like, all of us have certain ways of viewing God. But who is God to us? And at the beginning, and this is these, in these Gospels, Christ is asking this question to his disciples right before he shares with them what is going to happen this week. Same thing with us. Christ is asking us, who do you say that I am? Who am I to you this week? Examine your faith. See where you are. And the purpose of this, like the purpose of asking, the purpose of Christ asking, is not just so he can know. He already knows. He already knows my heart. But he's asking this so he can uncover what's inside. The mother of the Zebedee's brothers, one of the, again, one of the readings today, she asked him that, you know, she came to him and she wanted to ask him to have both of her brothers, one sit on the right side, one sit on his left side. And St. John Chrysostom explained this and says, Jesus asks them, what do you wish? Not being ignorant, but that he may compel them to answer and lay open the wound and so apply the medicine. He's asking us so he can open any wounds in our faith and use this, this week to heal those wounds. He's, he wants to, us to open up to him and see and, and look inside and see where are we? Where is my faith? What is my faith? What do I believe in? Who is Christ to me? And, and based on that, he can heal. He's the only one. He's the good doctor. He's the only one who can heal any wounds of faith that I have. So first one is examine the faith. Second is repent with hope. We see again in the morning Christ Cleansing the temple. The temple is you and I. And this temple needs cleansed. So Christ can come in. A resurrected Christ. So today, Christ is encouraging us. Examine yourself. Offer repentance. But, you're going to see from the readings, again, from the prophecies. Like a couple of the prophecies, and these were in the same hour. From Lamentations chapter 1, she, she, he's talking about Jerusalem, weeps bitterly in the night, her tears are on her cheeks. So weeping, the, the, the very next prophecy from the book of Zephaniah says, Sing aloud, O daughter of Zion, shout, O Israel, rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgment against you. He has turned away your enemies. Same, pro same hour, just two prophecies back to back. Weeping, but rejoice. This is what we're called to do. Yes, offer some weeping for our sins, but rejoice. Rejoice in Christ. Rejoice in his salvation. Throughout this week, even if I shed a tear, this tear should be mixed with rejoicing. Should be mixed with joy. Should, we, should be mixed with singing. 
because he has given us this salvation. So we said two things so far. What are they? Examine your faith and? And repent with joy, repent with hope. Third, again, what's at stake, at stake here? We said at the beginning, what's at stake? What's, what's the end? Resurrection, joy, abundant life. But Christ tells us, if you want this, you have to follow my footsteps. And he says a couple of things here. He says, he who loves his life will lose it, and he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, let him follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him will, my father will honor. Again, where I am, there my servant will be also. So, if he's at the fig tree, I'm at the fig tree. If he's at you know, the Last Supper, I'm at the Last Supper. If he's at the, you know, being beaten and stuff, I'm right there with him. So that when it comes Sunday morning, I am also with him outside that empty tomb. I can't just show up Sunday morning. I need to be there every step of the way with him. And about the idea of hating, like, you know, we hear this a lot, hating father, hating mother, hating life, hating all of that stuff. The purpose of that is not for us to hate, hate. This is a relative term. St. John Chrysostom, again, explains this passage, and he says, the present, the earthly life, is sweet and full of much pleasure. Yet not to all, but to those who are immersed in it. If anyone looks to heaven and sees the beautiful things there, he will soon despise life and make no account of it. Just as the beauty of an object is admired while none more beautiful is seen, but when a better appears, the former is despised. To make it like simple, okay? Right now, we're fasting. You know, we get hungry, we could use a, you know, a plate of koshari or, you know, a falafel sandwich or something, right? But when the lahma comes, right, you start kind of despising those other things. And these are, this is exactly what Christ is telling us. There are, or St. John Chrysostom in explaining this part, there is something way, way better. Something that is way, way better. There is abundant life. There is a victorious life. There is a resurrected life. But if I can't get outside of my bubble, I cannot enjoy that. In Matthew chapter 16, again, one of the readings, then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. This becomes difficult sometimes to us. The part of follow me, the part of the, you know, way to the cross and then to resurrection. This becomes a little difficult to us sometimes, but again, it is worth it because at the end there's abundant life. So the, the road, the little bit of, you know, falafel remaining this week is worth the Saturday resurrection or the Saturday night um, resurrection. And we, all, we do this out of love. We do all of this out of life. Abuna Paul last night shared with us about the, the woman, Mary, when she was ready to pour everything, when she experienced the love of Christ and the resurrected life. She was ready to, to give up everything. And, and I think our challenge, like Christ is challenge, challenging us to, to hate some of our comforts, some of the things that, are, that, are, that, are we, that we got used to so that he can give us something more, something way, way better. So again, to conclude, this week is a week of moving or, or of passing from death to life, to abundant life, to resurrection. 
In order to get there, we need to prepare. What are the three things that we talked about? Examine my faith. Repent with joy. And commit to follow Christ to the cross. I challenge every one of us to take this seriously and to maybe spend like 10, 15 minutes tonight. Examine yourself. Examine your faith. See where you are. Offer repentance and commit to give up something this week. I'm going to leave you with this verse from Romans. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are acc accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more than the conquerors through him who loved us. Glory to God forever. Amen. Amen. Be